What's up guys? Today we're going to be going over the incredibly personally anticipated Imperial Light Cruiser. And the reason I've been waiting for a set like this for so long is because this cruiser in universe is my all time favorite Star Wars ship. But we'll get more into that later. First, let's start with these amazing figures. Alrighty guys, so first up we have Cara Dune here, and I believe, I don't actually have a Cara Dune figure, I believe it is the same figure that we got in the ATST Raider set. But overall, she still looks good. It looks like her TV show outfit, except it looks like the colors might be swapped. I believe the blue going around just on her chest up top is actually gray, and then the rest of uh, like what almost looks like chainmail back there is actually blue. Maybe I'm misremembering, but maybe this was based on early concept art. Going on to the back of the fig here, the printing pretty much remains the same. It has the nice blue armor plating and then the gray, almost chainmail looking behind it. And then you can see that Cara Dune does have an alternate face, one where she's a little angry, and then where she's got a nice smirk going. And Cara Dune and Fennec Shan's blaster are made out of the exact same two pieces, just a nice regular rifle and then a gunmetal gray lightsaber hilt. Speaking of Fennec Shan, that's who we have up next, and the printing on this figure is absolutely amazing. This looks so accurate to what she's wearing in the TV show. They even went as far as to get some real nice arm printing going on there. Lego really went above and beyond on this figure, and I don't think there's much else I can say. You can see all the amazing details in there that follow the design of uh, her outfit in-universe. The nice little camo going down on the legs there. Overall, it just looks absolutely amazing. And then on the back side there, not as much detail, but they still put printing on here, and of course, like I mentioned earlier on the arms. And then her helmet mold is of course unique to her. It is a pretty interesting helmet and it does line up with her minifigure eyes. But unfortunately they didn't include a hair piece so if you don't want her to have the helmet she's just going to have to go a little bit bald. And then she does have two faces. One with a nice smirk and then another one just kind of a resting face. And then now we have of course Mando. And Mando does actually come with a black cape. I don't have the cape on my figure because I don't like to crimp them. But this is the same Mando we've been getting for a while now, except they included the Beskar spear right here, and it looks, you know, it looks good. Not too much detail, but what could they really do with a spear piece? This Mando figure is overall amazing. There's really nothing to change about it. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. And then he is still just coming with a black minifigure head under there. It would be nice to get a Din Djarin print at some point, but I feel like that's going to be far down the line. Now the main star of the show, the one that we all kind of want to battle pack for, is the Death Trooper. And this guy looks amazing. This helmet mold alone is amazing. It's so menacing, it looks so perfect. And then while I have it off, you can see they actually did print the minifigure head. They have the visor, and then they even have like a Death Trooper face print for it, even if they didn't include the helmet. And then going on to the rear side, even though it's always wearing the helmet, they have printing on the back side as well. Now LEGO, of course, didn't have to do that, but they did for whatever reason, so thank you for just going above and beyond. And then going beneath the helmet, this is actually the second figure in the same Star Wars wave to feature this shoulder and chest armor. The first one is Wrecker from the Bad Batch shuttle set, and then the next one is going to be Paz Vizsla from the Mandalorian Forge. It's nothing too crazy, it's just kind of worth noting that LEGO is kind of expanding their minifigure accessories and using them more often. But going on to the print there, his printing on there looks like his chest in-universe, and then going beneath that you can see the white is meant to symbolize some negative space because the Death Troopers are skinny around this hip area. And then going down the same thing going there that is, that is meant to emulate negative space I believe. I believe, I'm not actually 100% sure, that maybe some sort of armor plating on there meant to emulate some detail, but I think it's meant to be negative space. And if LEGO didn't already kill it with the minifigure head printing, they went ahead and did the exact same print on the chest. So if you don't even want to rock the shoulder armor, you can just rock the minifigure by itself. Admittedly, not as cool, but it's nice that they went above and beyond and did all this kind of detail. And then of course, on the back side, they even did back printing. The back of the chest armor doesn't have any printing because it has to have the two studs to make backpacks. But it's nice that they put it on the minifigure, even though you don't see it. So an absolute 10 out of 10 on this Dark Trooper fig. And then the last one we have here is Moff Gideon. And I know a lot of people are complaining about the Dark Saber. And I share those complaints, so I'm not even going to bother going over it because you all know what it is. But I guess it works for now, but we're going to get that off there to get a better look at the minifigure. His chest printing looks like the chest armor he's wearing in Universe. It doesn't have much detail, but his armor is actually very clean, it's very sleek, it doesn't have a lot of gizmos and gadgets on there. He's a high ranking official in the Empire so of course he's going to show that with the armor and clothing he wears. It's all very clean and very sleek. So he doesn't have too much printing anywhere. And Moff Gideon does actually come with a double sided cape or two capes. It's red on the inside and then black on the outside. But like I mentioned earlier, I don't have it on there because I don't like to crimp my capes. But apart from the chest printing, you can see he does have one expression. And overall it looks like Moff Gideon. They did what they could with the figure and it looks pretty good. And then he does actually have two expressions. On the front side, he's just got a calm, resting face right there. And then on the back side, he's a little more angry. 
And then while we're on the backside, you can see the armor continues around with the shoulder straps going around and then the nice red accents. And then last but not least, we have the little Grogu that we've been getting for a while. Nothing too special here. Saw a little Baby Yoda. The minifigure lineup on the set is absolutely amazing. Fennec Shand, they absolutely nailed it. They went above and beyond with all the detail they put on there. Mando, they always put a lot of detail onto that. He looks great as always. Their Dark Trooper, though, is of course one of the main reasons people want this set. But enough going over the minifigures, now we're going to head on to the ship. So before I really dive into this and start giving my opinion on this, I would like to say I am a little biased. This ship in universe is an Arquinens class light cruiser, and it is my absolute favorite ship in Star Wars. If I was in the Star Wars universe, and I had a crew, and we could pick one ship to captain throughout the entire universe, it's this. So I've been waiting for a Lego set like this for a long time. I've been wanting to mod my 7665 Republic Cruiser into one of these for a long time. Now that I finally have one, I'm more than excited. So we'll start up at the front, and overall, the entire exterior of the ship I think looks absolutely amazing. The only part I'm not happy with is right here. Now I know this space needed to be clear for the TIE Fighter shooting feature, which I'll showcase in a moment, but it just doesn't look that good. They could have used some gray Technic pins, or just one plate going around on this backside would have covered that up. Now I don't think it looks absolutely horrible, but it is the main part of this ship that I want to change. So this TIE Fighter shooting feature is pretty interesting. The set comes with two miniature little TIE Fighters that are made of, out of like six pieces. So what you do with these is you set them on this tile track here and then you launch them from the interior. So we don't have any more play features up front other than the TIE Fighter launch. But we do have two poseable turrets going down the side of the ship on both sides. And the builds for these are real nice and they do rotate in unison so you don't have to worry about the barrels being misaligned. Of course you have some nice grills and then some cheese slope grill pieces going down there to simulate some nice greebling. And then going up onto the wings, you can see on both sides, you do have two massive turrets that house spring-loaded shooters in them, surprisingly. LEGO doesn't usually put the large spring-loaded shooters up top on the cannons. Usually they would put something like stud shooters on here. And I think many people would be a little unhappy with the way these uh, the back end of the missiles are hanging out. But overall, I don't actually think this turret build looks too bad. I think it's very easily modifiable to take those spring-loaded shooters out and put the actual shooters themselves a few studs back and you'd have a good looking turret. Past the spring-loaded shooters, the only thing you can really do with this turret, you can rotate it, it does have full rotation, 360 degrees, and then the two barrels do go up and down, but they don't go in unison, so you do have to line it up yourself. It's a little annoying, but it would be pretty tough for them to do that anyways. And then just on the sides here, we do have these nice curved angle pieces to help blend it onto the fuselage of the ship so it looks a little more flush. And then going behind the turbo laser, you can see the Technic that uh, lifts up the entire roof piece for the interior space. And then beneath that, if you follow down, you actually do have an airlock or what is meant to simulate an airlock on both sides of the ship. And then going further down the side, you can see we have more greebling going on this angled bit here. But you actually do have a TIE Fighter bay on both sides of the ship to house both TIE Fighters so they don't have to sit up in the play feature up front. Just above this TIE Fighter hangar bay, you can see the massive bridge hanging off, and this bridge build is actually pretty good. It is just unfortunate that all these are stickers. They do slope it up pretty well, and they do actually nail the sloping and the shapes of the ship in-universe. What's up guys, real quickly, I totally forgot to mention that the bridge build actually doubles as a handle for the entire set. So you can lift it up by the bridge, and it won't fall off. But then going down from behind the bridge and behind the TIE Fighter hangar bays, you actually do have the three main engines on the ship. And for those who remember, this ship should actually have four secondary engines in between the three main engines. It's a little unfortunate that they didn't include that because that was pretty pronounced and visible in the show. And then they just try and fill up this empty space with a few nice angled pieces, uh, some bars, and then some grills going on there. And then just sloping up on top of the middle engine piece, you do have some nice clips and then some grills to simulate some nice greebling going on there. And I will say, over this entire ship, they do line up the plates pretty well and they do make it pretty seamless. Of course, except for right here, that's a pretty large gap that I'm a little unhappy with. That'd be very easy for them to fill with just some bricks or even some plates. But other than that, even up front, all the plates line up real well to the entire side of the ship. But overall, LEGO pretty much nailed the exterior look. There were a the few things I was unhappy with, the blue Technic pins and the gaps in the back. But overall, they pretty much nailed it. Now, I think the largest complaint people have had is actually the lack of interior space. Because we do only have one interior compartment. Now that's not to say it isn't good, but it is a little underwhelming considering the size of most cruiser sets usually have a pretty substantial interior. So in order to get into the interior space, I'm willing to bet you guessed it, it is this main portion just in front of the bridge here beneath the turrets. You just fold up on this front bit here, the hinge is located in the back, that Technic we saw from the outside, and then it exposes your entire interior. 
Classic. So the main thing in this interior space is of course the big command table. You do have the TIE Fighter launch handle that does take up some minifigure space. But on this nice command table, there is actually meant to be some stickers on the slow pieces. I would point at them, but I'm using my thumb to keep up this roof piece because it's fallen down like eight times. But then on that back side there, you have some control panels to fill out the wall space as well as two storage containers on either side. And then just above the control panels, you do actually have a nice clip to store one of the minifigure weapons. And as well, on both sides of this command table, you do have a nice cheese slow piece that has some control panel pieces on there. So then up front near the TIE Fighter launch feature, you do actually have two more control panels and it looks like they're trying to emulate gunner seats because they do have the screens on there. And it looks real good in there. They did an okay job at filling out this interior space. They definitely could have added more, but I'm pretty happy with it. Now, in comparison to many other cruiser sets, this interior space might be considered a little lackluster because it is just the one main area and one room, whereas many other Star Destroyers and big cruisers have had a command room and then just a little side technical room or maybe a room for the main figure in the set. Now, not that I'm complaining too much. I'm incredibly satisfied with this set, but I am just acknowledging that I do understand people's complaints about this set. Now my final opinion over this entire set, like I said, I am a little biased, so I will pretty much like this set no matter what. I finally have a LEGO official Arquidens class cruiser in my hands, so I am riding a little high on that, but I do want to say that I do acknowledge people's criticisms on the set. They are only including one Dark Trooper when there was like 12, and that was very touted that they had 12 of these enhanced troopers or whatever. So I do acknowledge the criticisms there and with the interior space and with a few other things, but overall I'm incredibly satisfied with the way that this entire thing turned out. The minifigure lineup, uh, the ship, all of it all together. LEGO hasn't put out too many large scale cruisers recently, and I think if you were wanting to get your hands on that, this would definitely scratch that edge. But I hope you guys did enjoy, and if you guys picked this set up, let me know what you guys think of it in the comments. Is it a little lackluster, or do you really enjoy it like I do? But I hope you guys enjoyed, and if you guys did, leave a comment like I said previously, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace, fellas.